The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All Hit Radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome back, everyone. This is the Exxon on the Talkstar Radio Network, Exxon Broadcast Network, UK High Definition Radio, Euro High Definition Radio, Star Cable. My toll-free number is 1-800-610-7035. Email exxon at exxonradiotv.com. On MSN Messenger, exxonradiotv at hotmail.com. And our website, www.exxonradiotv.com. My guest this hour is Rick Hayes, Exxon Nation. And since 2003, Rick has uh, brought inspiration and life-changing insight into thousands through personal consultations, media appearances, and speaking engagements. But tonight, uh, paranormal and life consultant Rick Hayes will share with you the gifts of life daily and the life after. Rick is a published author, inspirational speaker, the founder of Life's Gift, Inc., and uh, what many define as a world-renowned psychic medium. He has appeared on numerous radio and television shows that include Sirius Satellite Radio, CBS Radio, Fox TV, and the Sci-Fi Channel. Joining me now is Rick Hayes. And Rick, welcome back to the X-Zone. Long time no talk. Hey, it's great to be back, Rob, back in the X-Zone universe. You know, you, you've grown so much, you're not a nation anymore. You're a universe now. Oh, gosh. Now you've got me blushing, <laughs> old friend. Hey, you, you've been pretty busy yourself. You've done a couple of films. Uh, you're you're still out there talking to people, getting people to get their life in order, showing them that there is a better way to, li- to live. And you know what? You've done a great job yourself. Well, thank you so much. It, it is. I, I mean, my... my my headline anymore is living the supernatural life, and 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 uh, that's exactly what I'm doing. I am living life supernaturally. It's 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 been a phenomenal uh, since I came out in the public with the, these abilities eight years ago. It's Rob. It's been an absolutely phenomenal uh, daily life. Mm-hmm. T- t- tell me, Rick, when did you first realize that you had this gift and that you were going to use it to to make so many changes to the better in so many lives? Well, as I share with everyone, I do feel we all have these abilities that when we're created, we're mm-hmm. all given the abilities. And But as we're, as we're growing up, we're told it's coincidence, it's imagination. And I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm included. I was, when I was created, I feel like I had these abilities. The earliest I can recall was I was around, probably, I was one of those kids, Rob, that was mm-hmm. probably around, I was around four or five years old and I'd get up in the middle of the night, sneak into my mom and dad's room and crawl into bed without trying to wake them up. And I can remember that one of them would, would pick me back up out of the bed, you know, and carry me back into my room and tell me, go back to sleep now, honey. You know, everything's okay. It, it, you're just having a dream. And I would look at him and say, no, mommy, no, daddy. There's, there's a man standing over there by my closet and he keeps waking me up and talking to me, you know. So I've had this all my life, but as I've shared with you, Rob, my friend, I mean, I've, I kept them, I kept them to myself for many, many years. Yeah. I didn't want to be looked at as being an outcast or anything like that. So until the fall of 2002, and I had an experience with a family, uh, a friend of the family, and and a friend of mine, and and uh, the first time I, I was told that I was being selfish for not sharing this with others, and. So since March of 2003, when we launched Life's Gift, as I said earlier, it's just been a, you know, I wake up each day and, and just very excited about what the day's going to bring. Rick, stand by. You and I have to take our first commercial break for this hour. Exo Nation, Rick Hayes is our special guest. www.lifesgift.com or www.lifesgiftseminars.com. And uh, Rick and I will be back on the other side of this commercial break. As the Exxon continues from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. We'll be back in two. Don't go away.
Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Hi everyone, Rob McConnell here, and I wanted to spend a moment on internet streaming. Everybody has heard about internet streaming, but not many know much about it. Did you know the internet streams just about everything? Movies. From new releases to old classics. TV shows. Almost every show, every episode, and much more. But the question has always been, how do you do it? Well now, thanks to the folks at 123 Ready TV, I have the answer for you. They have developed a simple program app, 123 Ready TV, that you install on your Windows PC, Android smartphone, or Android tablet that can have you streaming like a pro in less than five minutes. You truly won't believe how much is available or how easy it is to do until you try. And for a one-time cost of only $19.99, sense this product is a real winner to learn more about 123 ready tv visit our website at www.xzbn.net Hello, I'm Justina Marsh, and with my dad, Pete, we are going to present a new show called Too Good To Be True. Together, we are aiming to discover more truths about this world and beyond. Do you have unanswered questions about the world? Do you ever wonder about aliens, conspiracy theories, or the universe? There are many shows discussing subjects such as pyramids or UFOs, but we want to relay this information based on our own research, including from spiritual means. Hopefully, listeners will be helped with their own beliefs and will appreciate the psychic insights that add to the previous research and information. We both look forward to sharing this insight and beginning this journey with our listeners. Visit xzbn.net for more information about when to listen. Rick Hayes is our special guest this hour, Exonation, www.lifesgift.com and www.lifesgiftseminars.com. Rick, uh, how has your unique abilities benefited you for a more enriched life? Well, I share with everyone, Rob, that, you know, before we can understand, the, before you begin understanding what the life after is all about, you got to first understand how valuable life is each day. Mm-hmm. You know, each day that you wake up, understand that it is it is created. It is a, it is a unique day just for you? It's no one else is going to have a day just like yours. Your challenges you have in your day, the rewards you have in your day, is all meant as a purpose along your path. And it, and so in that on that note, you should wake up every morning. You should be excited about your day. You should be given thanks for the day that you've been given because no one else has a day like you. You are unique like no other, and by by understanding how each day is so valuable, it will actually help you to understand more about what what is in the life after. Rick, what are life challenges, and how we sh- how should we look at them? You know, in today's society, it seems no matter where you go, there's there there's so much negativity, and and life challenges over the past three four years have have you know just been piled one on top of the other. And so how does one look at these multi-layered um, life challenges and how do they get through them each and every day? Well, it's, it's funny because I just returned. I just returned Sunday from a week in, down in Florida along the Gulf Coast. And before we left, I mean, everyone was saying, aren't you worried about the about the oil and mm-hmm. about the oil spill and about the tar balls on the beach? I mean, it's, it's terrible down there. And I kept relaying to them, no, I don't look at that. I look at it. It's going to be an opportunity to to visit and enjoy a part of this earth and to be a part of to to see the beauty in 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 different areas. Of course, got down there and the stands were very white and gorgeous and everything else. So, 
But I mean, for every challenge that you receive, you understand, first of all, a challenge is nothing more than a learning lesson. And it's a temporary lesson. And it's a lesson for you to learn about how valuable life really is. And I do feel, Rob, that for every challenge you receive in life, there is a reward. And it may take time before you receive that reward. But, but the key reward that you receive is that challenge that you went through you, you've learned a lesson from it. You learn from it. And as long as you're learning every day, uh, life gets better every day. So how, does the, how do the challenges that we face here every day in this life affect us in the life after? Well, uh, the, best, the best way I can define that is if, if you're a parent out there and you have young children, you're teaching your young children based on what you learn as you were growing up from your parents and from your daily life. So, you know, what? just look at it that way. Look at it as that every time that you're learning something about here, you're actually going to, to under, take that with you. I do feel we do carry our memories and experiences with us in the life after. And you take that with you, and in, in turn, you will continue to guide and, and protect your loved ones that are still here going through their life each day here on Earth. And so the more you learn about your, through your challenges here, the more you'll, you'll understand the value of what life is in your life after. So, so tell me, Rick, based on your experience both on this side and the other side, what's it like on the other side? Well, I tell you, Robbie, it's, it, I hear that so often people want to ask me, you know, what's it like over there? And they want me to start painting this picture of, you know, Ruby, Ruby roads and, and gold streets and, and, you know, mansions. And, mm -hmm. you know, the, the key that they always share with me is first of all, they, it, it, I've asked that question several times, even to my loved ones who've moved on, but it's, it's, it's apparent to me that we cannot completely understand it through our, in our minds. And so, and we cannot comp comprehend just how great it is. The only thing, and you've heard this many, many times, but I hear it so often through those who come through for me, is that there's no more pain, there's no, there's no sadness, there's, you know, and think about that. If, if you know that there's no pain, no sadness, no troubles, and you're living life with, with your loved ones, mm -hmm. and, and it's almost like a big happy family reunion, you know, it's like everyone's getting together and, and hugging each other and, and talking about the, you know, the old days and just enjoying it together and and it's life it's everlasting life i mean there is you will be doing that now forever so it's it's a joyous a joyous atmosphere it's a joyous environment but as far as physically how it looks i really truly feel we do not we cannot completely understand or comprehend how it is uh now those have come through and share with me like to their loved ones let them know that i'm enjoying my time sitting on the banks of the lake for example and fishing and, you know, are they really doing that? I, I, who, mm -hmm. They could be. You know, they absolutely could be. But I feel what they're doing is by sharing that with their loved ones here, and I've had this happen where a loved one will tell me, oh, you know what, that was when he was the happiest and at the most peace when he would go fishing. And, and so that was just, it's almost like a mindset. It's almost like a picture for us to understand how peaceful it is. Rick, do you, do you believe that we are reincarnated and that we come back to to learn more lessons in life? Well, first of all, I'll share this with everyone, and I, and I say this quite often. It's, it's the things I'm sharing this afternoon, understand this, that when Rick Hayes completes his plan and moves on, you know, his creator may say, sit down, Rick, we got a lot to talk about because yeah. you were wrong on a lot of things, you know, <laughs> so... But, uh, you know, I, I feel that, that reincar is reincarnation possible? Absolutely so. Anything is possible in life. Uh, but I'm still learning about that. Mm -hmm. I feel a lot of times, though, Rob, that when we feel like we, we have been reincarnated, that we are more probably receiving a message from a loved one who has moved on before us. And it may be your great, 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 great ancestor. And they're basically saying, as I was growing up, I heard my parents tell me, especially my dad, he would say, well, Rick, back when I was your age, this is, and he started going into detail, every little, every little detail about at a certain time in his life. Mm -hmm. And I feel like our loved ones at times are doing that for us to help us through a situation. And it is so connected with them that, that we feel like we've actually been there at that time. Is reincarnation possible? It, it, absolutely so. 
uh, is do I feel like it is there is such a that we can be reincarnated? I cannot answer that. It, it is possible, but the only problem I have is I do feel we're all created with a very unique spirit and within a very unique physical body. Yeah, and it's you... almost like it's it's almost like it's saying that our creator is dusting off our spirit and saying, well, let's dust this yeah. off and send it back down. You, know? you see, I, I, I have a major problem in 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 believing in the concept of reincarnation. I, I It's one of the most... It's one of the most challenging decisions I have yet come to. In my heart of hearts, I don't believe it. I really don't believe it because the stories that you hear from those who claim to have gone and had past life regression is is really sketchy, you know? And how often has have you heard that this person claims to have been the Joan of Arc in the past or this great Egyptian pharaoh or... Or Napoleon, they're always somebody great in grandeur, and I look at it as this is who they'd really like to be. They're not very happy with their own life, so they have to imagine that they were somebody else in their past life to compensate for this life. And and then you get the 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 religious and theological aspect of it. And sure, Western Eastern Eastern philosophies and religions talk about it. Over here in the West, you know, I think that we have a totally different way of looking at things, and when you talk to scholars, biblical scholars, and and people who deal specifically with the Western civilization, it seems to be absent. And if it was real, wouldn't it be throughout the Bible and other religious books besides the exactly. the Eastern philosophies? Exactly, uh, absolutely. And and you know, I'll just share this quickly. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the, the first year I was uh, actually st- started sharing these abilities, I had uh, someone contact me, and they said. You know, we read your book about what you felt about reincarnation. They said, but how can you explain this to me? And she began telling me how she had uh, had felt that she, she could tell me every little detail about this place overseas is a, is a place in England. And she she said it was a certain type of the of year in the 1800s, and she could describe the buildings and, and, and everything about it. And I replied to her back, and I said, well, I said, I'm not saying it's not possible, but let, let me, I would suggest this. Look in your family history and see if there's anyone in your family history. And by the way, this person was in the east coast of, of the United States. And I said, look in your family history and see if you have any family history of that area. And what I'm sharing with you is that, that you may have a loved one that lived in that area at that time and just simply is guiding you and, mm-hmm. and sharing with you these things in their life. Yep. Well, about three about three months later, she emailed me back and she said, uh, "My mom and I checked, and sure enough, we have we have we did not know this, but we do have relatives that lived in that area at that time." And see, that makes sense to me. Yeah. Tell me, should we feel sad when someone moves on, Rick? Well, you know, I, Rob, I wrote an article several years ago. It's called "Is It Okay to Cry," and it's been published in many many publications, but. What I was the, the whole concept of that was that it is okay to cry when a loved one completes their plan and moved on, and and you and I you know me and and I don't use the word death or dead very often just simply because the definition of those words means an end, and it's okay to cry because when you're crying when someone moves on it's simply the tears are simply sharing how much you care for them how much you love them. But, uh, but you know, there's also a comfort, though, of knowing that they are permanently not gone, that, that they are still around and you're, going, and you're going to still be around with them. So it's okay to cry. It's okay to be sad. But uh, also have the comfort with inside you that is a, it is a temporary sadness. My, for example, myself, I, my, I talk a lot about my grandfather and didn't know him because I was nine months old when he moved on. Mm-hmm. And he was a very highly respected evangelist, and he's been with, with me all my life. And I miss him. I tell him I miss him. And, I'm, and I miss the physical, you know, talking with him physically in his physical voice and, and, and hug, getting the hug from him from his, physical, from his physical structure. And it's the same thing. I mean, when you're crying, you're going to miss yeah. that. And it's common. It's normal to miss those kind of things. But have the comfort inside you knowing that, that they're still around and they're, 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 you're going to be with them. Hey, Rick, stand by, old friend. You and I have to take a commercial break with the news at the bottom of the hour. Exxon Nation, Rick Hayes is our special guest. His website's www.lifesgift.com, L-I-F-S-G-I-F-T.com, and www.lifesgift.com. 
seminars.com. We'll be back on the other side of this news break as the Exxon continues with Rick Hayes from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. We'll be right back. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Hi everyone, Rob McConnell here and I wanted to spend a moment on internet streaming. Everybody has heard about internet streaming, but not many know much about it. Did you know the internet streams just about everything? Movies. From new releases to old classics. TV shows. Almost every show, every episode, and much more. But the question has always been, how do you do it? Well now, thanks to the folks at 123 Ready TV, I have the answer for you. They have developed a simple program app, 123 Ready TV, that you install on your Windows PC, Android smartphone, or Android tablet that can have you streaming like a pro in less than five minutes. You truly won't believe how much is available or how easy it is to do until you try. And for a one-time cost of only $19.99, sense this product is a real winner to learn more about 123 ready tv visit our website at www.xzbn.net rick hayes is our special guest this hour exonation www.lifesgift.com and www.lifesgiftseminars.com rick a uh, have you investigated or have you been to many haunted places? And if so, what makes a place haunted and why do spirits or ghosts hang around? Well, Rob, I, t- I tell you, I've been very fortunate. I've been to, you, you name a, uh, uh, what, that, what they define as a haunted location, mm-hmm. and I have probably been there. Uh, in fact, I'm leaving to go to one Saturday evening and uh, just, uh, uh, just, like I said, just returned from Florida last week, so... I've been very fortunate and very, very honored and privileged to be, to be able to uh, visit all these, these locations. But, you know, everyone automatically cons- automatically defines a place that is haunted as filled with spirits, filled with spirits that are trapped, filled with spirits that, you know, that are there to, to, to bring fear or harm to you. You know, what, what I look at it is when I go to these locations is it is simply a location that that and again I call them loved ones. I that's my definition of spirit. They're just simply loved ones or spirits that have that are there to basically be our tour guides. For example, they're they're there to share with us. Who better to tell you about the location than those who have had the memories and experiences there? And they're not trapped there. You can't. You know, I I get it's almost funny because I've had those tell me, well, these spirits are trapped, but then they'll turn right around and say. Well, I saw them go through a wall, and you know, I almost want to say, well, if they can go through a wall, why can't they get out? You know, mm-hmm. so, but uh, you know, I, I feel, uh, you know, a location. What they define as a haunted location is simply, uh, it's a location or it's a place where the loved ones who have had experiences and memories there are simply there to share with us what what happened there to them, what what they went through in their life there, and to help us to better understand those locations. I'm never frightened when I go to these locations because I know that uh, they know that I'm there to learn and they're there to help me to learn. What are you there to learn, Rick? I'm, I'm actually, it, it's really amazing because, and I wish I would have u- utilized this a lot more when I was back in high school. I probably would have done a lot better in history. <laughs> but, uh, you know, when I go to these locations, it, I'm there to learn from them about what they went through. Uh, for example, I, I did a, a a segment for the travel channel that'll be on uh, this summer and uh it'll be a part of the most terrifying places in america and uh th- this was an old home that was built in the late 1800s it was actually the same home that was a part of the uh, film that was on in sci-fi called the possessed and you know the, those individuals that are there i learned from them i learned i before i got that location didn't know anything about the location but by listening to these energies, by listening to these loved ones and telling me what they went through there, and I actually got to know more 
I, I learned more, Rob, from from them, and and about and they validated the things that I shared with them later on. I learned from them more than any brochure, or any anyone could have told me that's here because, you know, when you live it, you know, just like uh, just like myself, I, if someone comes to my home, I can share with you the the you know the the memory of the Christmas tree in the corner or the you know, or the family uh, Thanksgiving dinner at the table. And, and I can share with you things like that that there, that no one else would know but me. And so it's the same thing when I go to these locations. And it's a learning experience, and that's how I look when I go to these locations, is so, I'm learning from them. So do you go to these locations just to learn about the history, Rick, or is there another reason why you go there? Well, uh, you know, originally it, it's Rick, you got it's this. It's Rick, you got to come to this location because it's haunted. And we, you know, we want you to connect and it's like, well, okay, I will, you know, that's not a problem with that. And that, but as I go there, uh, my, my objective is to number one, find out who is there Mm -hmm. uh, for those that are wanting to know number two, why they're there and why they're hanging around there and what they're doing there at that time. And, And the third thing is to, is to learn and to find out why, what they went through when they were there. You know, I, I was in a uh, I was in a sanatorium just a, uh, about a month ago, uh, and it's it's very well known, and and I've been there like seven times in the last five years, and every time I go there, it is I connect with someone that's sharing with me something mm-hmm. new, and something different, and you know, and that's that's exciting for me to be able to go to these places, and and not only to share this, share the messages I received with those that are there with me, uh, but also to be for them to later on validate what I'm sharing with them. You know, it's, it's one of those, uh, it's one of those, wow, this is awesome type of deals, you know? (laughs) How, how do the spirits know, Rick, that they can actually communicate with you and that you can hear and see them? Well, it's, it's, now I have those Rob who will, you you know, when I'm in personal consultations, in Mm -hmm. fact, I just had one yesterday afternoon and, and their loved one, when he first came through, he, he, he was testing me. He was saying, you know, he was saying he was checking to see if I was going to do the right thing for their family. And so and he was saying things. he would make a statement or he would say something. And, and he said, you know, said a couple words just to see if I would repeat them. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, it's just like if I came, you know, if I came to everyone listening today, if I came to your home and and I rang your doorbell, you would open the door, you would see me. And that's how if I'm with I can personally see them uh, and I can you can feel their presence and also uh, if I if we start talking to each other then you know you hear me and I and I hear you and it's it's basically the same thing it's it's not too much difference so have you ever come across uh, something that people may call as an evil entity something that has been demonic where you've actually suffered some physical um, it, let's see, have you been pushed? Have you been hit? Have you been scratched? Have you been punched? Uh, really not. No. Right. <laughs> and, and, and it surprises a lot of people because all the places I've been to, they're, they're really surprised. Now, have I been pushed? I, I wouldn't say pushed. It's almost like a little, little touch. It's almost like they're just nudging me to let me know they're there. Right. Uh, now I'm not saying Rob, that there's no such thing as evil spirits. There are evil beings on the earth. You know, in my upbringing, I was raised in a religious upbringing and, and in the biblical scriptures, it states that the, the main evil one was, who was actually had a part being a part of the life after, but was jealous and greedy and got descent and got cast out and descended upon the earth. So there are evil beings on the earth, but I refuse. This is the key here. I refuse to allow them to to take control. And it's very simple how you do that. You be you stay positive. You remain positive with a positive attitude. Understand that your creator is more powerful than anything, and you are in control. They're not in control. You're in control. So when I go to these locations and and I have you know something like fall off the wall, or, you know fall fall off or you know, fly or, or, you know, we see something or something, someone pulls, a, pulls our hair or something like that. I don't look at it as being that someone that's trying to, trying to harm us. They're just trying to get our attention. And once I, once I get, once I acknowledge them, uh, they quit, they immediately acknowledge who they are, what they're doing. But no, I've never had to deal with, with evil beings, just 
simply because I am, I am, I'm in control. <laughs> what is it, Rick, in the human psyche that is making more and more people turn to the paranormal for answers? You know, it, it, first of all, it, it shows like yours. Um, I feel like in the last several years, the media has really opened up uh, and allowed people to, to maybe start thinking maybe there's more than life here. Uh, so I, I commend the media for that, for, for opening up the doors for, for those like myself. Um, I, I also feel like because of the, we talked about challenges earlier, I think mm -hmm. because of the challenges we've had in the last several years, people are looking for, for maybe a, another opportunity for hope. And, and, I, and I believe they're being more open-minded. You know, years ago, actually when I was growing up, I mean, it was a more of a traditional sense. You thought this way, you, you, you walk this way, you talk this way, and because that's the way we've always done it. And today, in today's society, especially the younger generation, and, and I, I really, I, I, I speak in a lot of schools and a lot of academic institutions, and these, this younger generation is, it has a very open mind and are saying, you know, just because we thought it wasn't possible many, many years ago does not mean it's not possible. And I usually share, you know, 50 years ago, if we would have talked about something about sending a, uh, sending a message to someone and within two seconds they would receive it, we would have thought that's absolutely not possible. But today we have a thing called texting and emails, and it's very possible. So uh, I, think, I think it all has to do with many things, Rob. I think the media has a lot to do with it. I think the younger generation has a lot to do it, and I think because of the uh, just the atmosphere and the environment we have today, and people are looking for more for hope and under and a better understanding of what's more than just life here. All that is is wrapping into a very nice present for us to to really enjoy life itself. Where do most spirits hang out, uh, Rick? Do they hang out in the place where they died? Do they hang out in a place that is that has favorite or fond memories for them? Do they hang out in the homes of those that they love? Is there any specific place where we can find spirits more places than others? Well, they hang out listening to the X Zone every day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you know, but really, I mean, they are around us, and they're just, um, you know, they're they're in you mentioned they, they they may be in we talked about this earlier they may be in a location that when wherever we're visiting that they want us to know about that was a part of their life um you know and they may be around where they was i was on a navy ship uh last year and there was some energies there and and it's simply that was the naval they were they were in these energies were in the navy it was a part of their life and they really enjoyed it and they really are wanting us to continue to to be proud of what they went through in their life. So they're, they're, ever, they're around us. They're, they're around us. They're, they're here. They're there. Um, you know, people ask me, well, how can they be here? And, and are they not in heaven per mm -hmm. se? You know, and I share with them, you know, the apostle Paul wrote, there are three heavens, the heaven here on earth, heaven in the stars heaven beyond the stars, which is saying is your life here today that you're living each, each day is a part of heaven. When you move on and being around your loved ones, and helping and guiding them, that is a part of heaven. And then, of course, then, then the moving forward to the third heaven. Why do so many people who call themselves ghost hunters, and I'm using this, this title very loosely because I think a lot of these people need to get a good bath in something called reality, uh, yeah, you get a camera and you're automatically a ghost hunter. Exactly. Why, <laughs> why, why is it that we see them tromping through graveyards looking for ghosts? Why, in my opinion, that's the last place where a ghost would want to be. And that's why you and, I, you and I are good friends, Rob, because I truly feel the same way. I mean, why would you want to, uh, you know, stay in, a, stay in the ground? Yeah. And uh, now, now, and I'll... And I'll retract a little bit here. I've had those who share with me that they went to their loved one's gravesite mm -hmm. 
and they feel the connection there, and they've they've actually felt something there, yeah. heard something there. I, I, I well, can the I thing, can I can agree with that. When it's when you go to the graveyard, like whenever I go to my grandmother's uh, grave in Montreal, whenever I visit, I feel the connection with my grandmother because her memories are there. The day when she was laid to rest is is you know it's in my memory. There are so many emotions that are tied in with me visiting her final resting place. But I, I don't get that impression when I'm in other graveyards. So, you know, it's it's like, <laughs> come on, people, give your heads a shake. Yeah. Well, I and I share with everyone that, you know, when you're there and you're honoring them, you're thinking of them, they're right there with you. They're exactly. they're just they're there because you're there. But when you leave, they're gonna leave with you. They're not gonna hang around in a place like that. Now, I do feel they, that paranormal investigation, you know, the Gettysburg is is a, you know, is a is a is a place that everybody talks about, and I have been there, and when I am that when I have been there, I felt a connection, but again, it goes back to that has a piece of history, that is a place of history, so, and they understand why I'm there, I'm wanting to learn there, mm -hmm. so, but when you go into cemeteries or you're going to places like this. Um, you know, if if anyone is, if you're connecting with paranormal investigators, if you're connecting with anyone in the in the cemetery, they're only there because you're there. When you leave, they're not going to stick around. There's no reason to. Rick, you and I have to take our final break. Great talking with you. Welcome back to the Exxon. It's been way too long, my friend. Thank Rick, you. Rick Hayes is our special guest, Exxon Nation www.lifesgift.com that's www.lifesgift.com and www.lifesgiftseminars.com and Rick Hayes and I will be back on the other side of this commercial break as we continue from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada on the Talkstar Radio Network, Exxon Broadcast Network UK High Definition Radio Euro High Definition Radio, Star Cable, Ustream, and I'd like to welcome our newest affiliate to the show, KKRP AM 950, The Rainbow 95 in Oklahoma. We'll be back. Don't go away. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Hello, I'm Pete Marsh. With my daughter Justina, we will be presenting the new radio show, Too Good To Be True. If something seems too good to be true, it usually is. But with the help of Justina's amazing gifts, we're going to gain insight into questions that don't yet have complete answers. Have you wondered who built Stonehenge and for what reason? Why are crop circles found in the same region as Stonehenge and elsewhere? Are crop circles a hoax or are they created with technologies that we have little knowledge of? Who built the pyramids in Egypt and also in other countries? How and why were they built? Was the Titanic switched with the Britannic as part of a gigantic insurance fraud or for more insidious reasons? What caused the Tunguska event when trees were flattened over an 800 square mile area in Siberia? Will the new insights be too good to be true? Well, that will depend on what you are prepared to believe. Please join us as we start on this journey together. For more information on Too Good To Be True, visit www.xzbn.net. are our personal gateways into infinite wisdom. Don't miss Shamanic Counselor and Indigenously Trained Dream Decoder Sandra Corcoran's inspiring book, Shamanic Awakening Between the Dark and the Daylight. This remarkable work chronicles Sandra's 35 years of experience with diverse wisdom keepers and her initiations throughout the Americas and across the British Isles, Turkey, Greece, and Egypt. Sandy's knowledge of symbology, psychology, and myth influence her dream blog and workshops. Sandy offers private tarot readings, international journeys, a meditative CD, as well as her book, Shamanic Awakening, to encourage you as you navigate this earthwalk, creating a deeper connection to yourself and all that is. Find this and more at Sandy's website, starwalkervisions.com. Rick.
Rick Hayes has been my guest this hour, XO Nation. Rick's websites are www.lifesgift.com and um, www.lifesgiftseminars.com. And Rich, uh, Rick is uh, featured in the docufilm The Possessed by NBC Universal Studios, a Spooked Productions, and Soul Catcher, which is by NBC Universal Spooked Productions on the Sci Fi Television Network. Hey, Rick, always great having you here in the Exxon. What message would you like to leave with the worldwide listening audience of the Exxon? Well, first of all, you know, as, as I said during the break, with you during the break, it's always a real pleasure to, to be a part of, of this show. And, and uh, this show, as I said to you, Rob, you're making a difference to that one person out there that's listening today. And, and uh, you know, that's what we that's one of the things we should look mm-hmm. at when we wake up each morning is what what can you do to make a difference today? And uh, my my final message to everyone today is to embrace every moment that you receive in your life. And and always keep the faith. Do you think that there will come a time, Rick, when the the veil of forgetfulness will be totally lifted, and those who are skeptics and those who are non-believers will will be able to see and understand what those like yourself and many other credible people who are out there are seeing, and why it's so important to them, like it is to you, to share the information. Well, in a sense, I do. I hope it happens, and in a sense, I hope it doesn't. Because you know, if we all felt the mm-hmm. same way, we wouldn't. We would not learn. And so, it's always good that you know. And being skeptical it just simply means you're still learning to understand. So, uh, I, but I also know that when you complete your plan, you will know. <laughs> so, I guess so, so there will be a time when everyone will know. One quick question: uh, Suicides are up. What happens to a person who commits suicide? Well, yeah, yeah, Rob, and, uh, and that's always very touching to me because because of the, we talked about traditions before, mm-hmm. there are mindsets out there that one who commits suicide doesn't have the opportunity to move on. And, you know, but I have found that not to be true just from the loved ones who've came through who have made that choice. And again, we have choices yeah. here in life and just like we do in the life after. And, but when those who have completed their plan before is actually to be completed, uh, it's almost like they go back to school again in their life after, and it makes sense. They have to learn ab- ab- about the life that they did not completely learn here. And so they have to, they have to learn about life in order, in order to help continue to guide and, and, uh, and to, to guide those, those loved ones that are, that are theirs here on still on earth going through their path each day. So they're enjoying the life after, but at the same time they're learning in a what I call going back to school. Rick has always... Great talking to you. Quickly, give our listeners your two websites, please. Uh, it's a, Just come and visit with us at lifesgift.com. That's L-I-F-E-S-G-I-F-T.com. And our sister website is lifesgiftseminars.com. And uh, we always got something going on exciting every day. And, Rob, again, it's been a pleasure to be a part of the X-Zone Radio today. I look forward to having you back on in the future, my friend. Until then, take care of yourself and keep your great work up. Thank you. XO Nation, Rick Hayes, once again, two websites, www.lifesgift.com and www.lifesgiftseminars.com. I'll be back on the other side of the news at six and a half minutes past as we continue from our studios here in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, on the Talkstar Radio Network, XO Broadcast Network, UK High Definition Radio, Euro High Definition Radio, and Star Cable. And once again, welcome to the XO Nation Radio 95.